So we're going to start this session. Uh, my name is Catherine Stoller Peters. I'm a PhD candidate here in the Information Science Program. Uh, my interest is, well, I come from the archival perspective. And I think there's a little bit of noise down there, so I, I'm really going to try to be loud. Uh, if, if you can't hear me too well in the back, you should guys wave. Okay. Um, so what I'd like to talk to you about a little bit today is what happens when all the products of the open source tools we're using are created. Um, most of the products from the software systems today that people have been speaking about are electronic in nature. And unlike the records and letters in your grandma's attic, electronic records really can't uh, enjoy benign neglect. Right? They're not going to be around for 50 years unless there's some sort of active maintenance that you do in order to keep them. So um, I'd like to talk about open source tools that you could use to potentially preserve the products of open source tools. So, how many people have ever heard of the Open Archival Information System? A couple of people? All right. So, um, this is uh, a conceptual outline for what a digital archive should look like. It was developed by uh, NASA, and a group of people, um, librarians, uh, electronic records managers, um, uh, information scientists, information technologists, scientists. And um, the funny thing about this system is that uh, because it was created in uh, the interworkings of a bunch of different professional organizations, they changed a lot of words that are commonly used and gave them new meanings. So. They don't use the word archive because for archivists that means something. It means you're managing uh, electronic materials and there was some sort of appraisal process that happened to determine something would be kept for a while. In the IT world, archive usually just means backup. So because of that, uh, this standard has some pretty, some pretty funny terms, including ingest. <laughs> and um, uh, this standard, like I said, it's, uh, it's conceptual in nature, and um, the parts of the system that relate to an actual uh, physical technology system are everything that's within the box. And the people components are the producers, the managers, and the consumers. Now usually, um, the producer is just the creator, the consumer is the end user, and the manager is the administrative piece. So this is the basis for most uh, electronic preservation systems that exist. Now, before anything gets into a big electronic preservation system, there's something that happens to those records ahead of time. And that's in this thing that you'll notice isn't actually in the model. Right? It's the pre-ingest phase. It's before you get everything into a preservation system where you'll actively manage it. Manage it. There'll be some sort of action on that end. And it actually turns out that that's the part where most open source tools will come into play. It's also the part where most processing occurs. So let's envision, um, let's envision a case. Let's say I'm an archives and I would like to keep um, word manuscripts of a recent published book for a really long time. Microsoft Word manuscripts. <laughs> There's a lot of things you have to do to the manuscripts before they can be technically preserved. You have to figure out what the title of the file is. You have to figure out if the files that your institution has, if there are four versions, all with different names, or if there's just one version that you're going to keep. You have to figure out some sort of descriptive tool, uh, uh, information or metadata about the file. You have to figure out when it was created and it, uh, when this particular file was created, also when the published version was created, if it was ever created. There's a lot of information that you would need to get out of this uh, manuscript material. <coughs> and there's two ways to go about getting that information. One of the ways is manual processing. And as you can imagine, manual processing takes a really long time. If you'd like to create a marked up record of a manuscript or a group of files that make up a Word manuscript for a published document. You could create 
XML records by hand. That's time consuming. But it's helpful because it allows me to incorporate the semantic understanding of the object. Tiger can get the descriptive information out, the topic, the title, the versions. So that part's good. The other choice is automatic processing. And as you can imagine, something that's automatic could be faster, there's probably fewer errors, it would be done in a standardized way. One of the difficulties is that semantic data, the descriptive data about the electronic record, it's much harder to get. So, there's actually a third choice for processing these objects. You can imagine it would be a combination of both manual and automatic. That's probably what most people use. But in terms of automatic processing activities, there's a lot of open source tools that exist. And there's a lot of digital preservation activities you have to do with that electronic record before the open source, uh, that the open source tool could help you with. So to think about the electronic or the digital preservation activities, one of them is metadata extraction. So that's just uh, describing the contextual, structural, administrative, preservation, and descriptive data about the electronic record that you're going to be ingesting into your digital repository or that you're planning on preserving for a long time. You have to figure out what file format it is. Is it a Word document? Is it a Word perfect document? Is it a Word 1.0 document? Is it a Word 2003 document? And each one of those factors would have you uh, react to the document differently. File normalization is something that you would do with a file if you didn't want to keep it in that document or in that format for a while. So, do you think that Microsoft Word would be a, a good preservation strategy for the long term? Long, long term? Anybody? No? I figured this room would say, absolutely not. <laughs> There's nothing I'd rather keep my things in. Um, uh, so why, why would people say no? Proprietary. It's proprietary. So, what's that mean? Might not be able to read it later. Okay, yeah, Microsoft could go bust. And then they're not creating new viewers to read your Microsoft Word document, and you're in trouble. Um, or now you've bought into a system where you always have to pay Microsoft money in order to be able to read or view their products. Or you have to buy another product that uses their plugin so that you can read their document. All right. um, however, Microsoft Word. Is it pretty commonly used? Yeah. You think there's going to be a lot of Microsoft Word documents and digital archives in the future? Yeah? Is it kind of a de facto standard? Kind of use it like that just because it's so part of our everyday lives? It is. So um, I just, uh, an institution will have to make the decision if Microsoft Word is a preservation valuable format or not. If not, what are alternate formats? An ebook format? Any of those open document formats? Those are all those are all valuable. So turning Microsoft Word documents into a new format like ebook or like uh, an open office document or ODT, the open document format. Um, that's all called migration. Other preservation activities. Let's say I'd like to make sure that the document that I got into my repository today is the same document that it goes into the repository in two weeks, or that's in the repository in a year or 50 years. Right? There's a way to check that fixity, and that's checksum creation, which a number of you are probably familiar with. But all you're doing is you're taking your digital file, and you're running it through an algorithm to come up with a number encoded in hex, or hexadecimal format. And if you always run the same file through the same algorithm, you're always going to come up with the same number. And if you change one space or one character or <coughs> one or a lot of uh, the data stored in that file, the checksum that's created will be completely different. So that fixity check is something that happens in digital preservation. Um, you're interested in virus scanning, making sure that if you get a big chunk of email, from that author that created the manuscript materials, that there's not actually a virus in there. 
that's so old that your current virus systems don't check it. That actually happens. You get email from 10 years ago. It's unleashed into your system because your virus checker just forgot about it or was too new. <laughs> um, if you're interested in automatic file listings, that open archival information system that we talked about. the ingest section, you bring material into the electronic system, you keep it, and then you share it in some way, there's little information packages that come and interact with each one of those activities. One of them is the submission information package. That's what happens when it first gets into the system. One of them is the archival information package, and that's how it's stored. And one of them is the dissemination information package, and that's how you take the digital object and you share it. And those packages really mean that what you're preserving isn't just the digital object itself, but you're preserving all the metadata around it, the descriptive metadata, or the rules about who can see it, or the rules about how this document is the normalized version of the Microsoft Word document that you had. All of that information is kept together in a package. And that SIP or APE creation is a part of your digital preservation Another activity could be forensic copy creation. So let's say I'm tired of dealing with all of my individual manuscript files from an author, or I actually want to find out more information about those files instead of just the, the raw file and opening it up in Microsoft Word to see what the user or what the author saw. I might be interested in deleted versions of the files, or I might be interested in a different version history, or I might just be interested in Let's say something came in in solid media. I might be interested in what else was on that media prior to saving the file. And there are forensic tools that you can use to create a copy of that record and store the entire bit by bit, sector by sector copy of the electronic record on a, on a media and allow that, um, have that available either to archivists or uh, future researchers to try to gain information about the electronic record. Another digital preservation activity is creating a neat universal identifier. So that's just a nice like, card catalog number for your electronic record. An easy way to get to it, pinpoint it when you 